Hey Guardians, welcome back to another episode of Zur's Wares. Today Zur is located on Nessus in the Watcher's Grave. Let's see what he has for us today. If you're enjoying our de my Destiny 2 content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. I like to upload Destiny videos at least once or twice a week for all your Destiny 2 content. We're here on Nessus. Hopefully Zur has some good things for us this week. I'm looking for more more resilience and recovery and possibly some spike in discipline for my warlock builds and overall all my characters builds. So Zer this week for exotics he has brought back the Queen Breaker linear fusion rifle with wire rifle, fires a long range blinding bolt and hip fire grip. This I would pick up for your collection if you don't have it but overall I would pass on it because you have better options for a heavy linear fusion rifle. Next up is the Hunter's Knucklehead Radar Helmet with upgraded sensor pack. Provides radar while you are aiming, enhanced radar while crouching. This isn't a bad piece of exotic armor. I see this used a lot more on your Void Hunters. So pick it up if you don't have it. Next is the Titan's Chest Armor, the Armamentarium, with the perk and another thing. Gain an additional grenade charge. This is good and useful in your grenade builds for Titans. It gives you that additional grenade charge, so you should be able to spam those abilities if you have the build set up right. And it's nice in this particular piece, you have a spike in resilience. And last for the exotic armors is the Warlock Starfire Protocol with a nice spike in resilience, discipline, and a little bit of strength and an armor roll of 60. Not bad with the perk fusion harness, extra fusion grenade, grenade kills, charge rift. This is a nice piece to pick up especially in your warlock solar builds this season with uh, solar 3.0. Very high damage output if you set up a build properly with starfire protocol. And for the weapons this week, Zura has brought us the True Prophecy Hand Cannon with a nice combo of Grave Robber and Demolitionist. Not bad, if I say so myself. Melee Final Blows. Reload this weapon's magazine from reserves. Demolitionist kills with this weapon generate grenade energy. Activating your grenade abilities reloads this weapon from reserves. It has Fast Draw HCS Sights and Crossfire HCS Sights. We have an extended mag and we have a steady rounds with a reload speed masterwork. This is not a bad piece of weaponry. I would definitely pick this up for your PvE content. Next, Zur has the Nature of the Beast hand cannon, which has arc damage with snapshot sights, range finder, steady rounds, extended mag, and your HCS sights. This is a good choice for your PvP content with Crucible. Coming up next week, Crucible has a double ranking, so this will be a good weapon to bring in there and get those kills. Third weapon is Verpecula, which is a stasis hand cannon, which has a tunnel vision and opening sight. Not very good perks, so I would pass on this. Zara has brought us an older weapon here, Far Future, which is a solar sniper, sniper rifle, auto loading holster, and demolitionist. Pick it up for your collection. And the Soldier's Tail, which is a solar shotgun from last season. I'm sorry, season 14. This particular shotgun is a pinpoint slug frame, rapid hit and surrounded. This will be very good in your close quarter combat situations. With surrounded, you gain bonus damage when you have three more enemies in your proximity. And rapid hit, precision hits temporarily increase the building reload speed. You have accurized rounds, an assault mag, a fluted barrel, and a chambered compensator. With reload speed masterwork, I would pick this up for your PVE. And the heavy sword of choice, the Fallen Guillotine. The Fallen Guillotine is very handy in 
Add clear was surrounded. This weapon gains bonus damage when three or more enemies are within close proximity. Tireless blade, sword ammo granted for every other powered sword kill. So every time you use your heavy spinning attack with this sword, you every other kill gets you a generated heavy ammo for it. Not the best perks for this particular sword. You can do better, but not a bad choice if you haven't have this. If you do not have the sword, I would pick it up. Next is Swarm of the Raven, which is a heavy grenade launcher with auto loading holster and Genesis. Genesis is a very situational talent. Uh, breaking a combatant shield with this weapon fills its magazine from reserve. Energy weapons regenerate ammo on hit and when matching the damage type to the combatant shield. Like I said, very situational. Forget this to proc. Auto loading holster is nice. When you have this weapon holstered, it regenerates your ammo. Mini frags high velocity rounds with volatile launch and a countermass. Pick this up for your collection if you don't have it, but I would give this one a pass. Armor pieces Zeros brought us are the Wild Hunt armor set, which for the Warlock gloves, he has a spike in resilience and discipline with an armor rating of 61. Not too bad. The chest armor, a little bit of spike in resilience with an armor perk of 60. Wild Hunt Hood, which has a little bit of a spike in mobility and a big spike in intelligence. Not bad if you're looking to regenerate your super quicker. And the boots have a spike in recovery and intelligence with armor score of 64. These armor pieces are not too bad in their armor scores this week. Zer has really brought some good armor pieces. But you, like in previous times, you want to have armor pieces in the 60s, but ideally in the 70s. The two exotic weapons Zer has brought us are, of course, the Hawk Moon with opening shot and with textured grip. These two perks together are not very useful for the Hawk Moon. I'd wait for a better roll with this particular one. A good roll was last week's Hawk Moon with the Rangefinder perk on it. Next is Dead Man's Tail. Dead Man's Tail is the exotic scout rifle with four times the charm. This is a terrible perk to have with this particular weapon due to the Dead Man's Tail being the best hip fire scout rifle in the game. So this perk is counterintuitive. Rapidly landing precision hits will return two rounds to the magazine. I would wait and pass on this. The talent you're looking for in Dead Man's Tail is you're looking for Vorpal. So next up with Zer, we're going to look up what the Hunter and Titans have in store for us. Stick around Guardians. Be right back. Back Guardians on our Hunter. Let's see what Zer has for us in armor this week. If down in the comments you could leave me something saying what pieces you're looking for from Zer, I'd like to give that a look and see what all other Guardians are in the hunt for this week. Hopefully we can get these great armor pieces so we can continue to make our Guardians excellent and great heroes. So Zer for the Hunter this week, he has brought us the the grips for the Hunter, which are stuck in mobility and strength, the armor rating 55. If you're looking to increase your mobility in your Hunters, by all means I pick these up. The chest armor, a little spike mobility and strength, not terrible, but it has a nice 60 armor score. The helmet has a spike in recovery and intelligence, armor score of 66, not bad. And then the leg armor has a spike in resilience and discipline with the armor score of 59. Any of these armor choices are actually excellent to pick up. These could ex help out in many different builds. So finally we're going to see what the Titan has and I'll be right back. All right, we're back here with the Titan. And if you're wondering why my Titan is glowing with his armor pieces, this is from the the Solstice this year. 
by all means give Solstice a try. Try the Bonfire Bash. Help get your armor pieces upgraded and get that nice Shader Glow. So for the Titan, we have a Resilience and Strength Spike in the Gauntlets with the armor score of 61. The Chest Armor, Spike in Intelligence. Good if you want to get your supers back more quickly. The Wild Hunt Helm which has a spike in resilience and discipline with an armor score of 67. And lastly, the boots spike in resilience and intellect with a 62 armor rating. This week, guys, Xur has brought us some pretty decent armor rolls in all three subclasses. None of them are a bad choice to pick up. They might not have the extreme spike you're looking for in, say, either any of the stats we're looking at, but not bad choices to pick up to complete your armor collection, but also to help out in a range of builds. Also, if you're beginning with builds, these are good starting points. But I would say the star of this particular Xur's Wares is going to be the Starfire Protocol. With that high spike in resilience and discipline and that armor score of 60, I would definitely pick these up for your PvE content. You can make some pretty nasty and disgusting DPS grenade builds with that Starfire Protocol. It's one of those forgotten exotics that has been brought out of obscurity with Solar 3.0. Pick it up, guys. Try it out. Have some fun with it. And as always, Guardians, stay safe.